The world is as delicate and as complicated as a spider's web. And like a spider's web, if you touch one thread, you send shudders running through all the other threads that make up the web. But we're not just touching the web, we're tearing great holes in it. Gerald Durrell was born in Jamshedpur, India, in 1925. He returned to England in 1928, before moving to the Greek island of Corfu with his family in 1935, after much urging from his older brother Lawrence. As he grew older, his interest in all things to do with nature grew stronger, and after the war he was given the job as a student keeper at Whipsnade Zoo. And at 21, Using his inheritance, he funded his own collecting trip to the Cameroons. It was by no means an easy ride for Gerald, but a treasured experience. The trip was a huge success. In July 1957, he returned from his fifth collecting trip with 200 reptiles, 50 birds, and a nine-month-old chip called Chumley St. John. The animals were shared between several members of the Durrell family whilst Gerald began the search for a suitable site. Eventually, Gerald found his way to the island of Jersey, where he was to lease the Les Orgres Manor, which would later become the Jersey Wildlife Preservation Trust. As the years went on, Gerald led many more successful expeditions, bringing back countless animals from all over the world into his safe hands. In 1982, he was awarded the OBE. Unfortunately, in 1995, Gerald passed away at the age of 70. In 1999, the name of the park was to be changed to the Durrell Wildlife Conservation in honour of its founder. I would say that what motivated Gerald Durrell very simply, initially and through his life, was a great overwhelming love of animals because you can tell from his books that even as a child he was utterly fascinated by nature and that never never left him and um, he was apparently a man of enormous enthusiasms anyway he was a very enthusiastic personality and his love of animals was overriding and but what it was was a love of the animals that perhaps other people were not caring about very much Today, the Durrell Wildlife Conservation is home to over 130 different species of rare and endangered animals. It is also the HQ that coordinates Durrell's international conservation work. More than 40 projects in 17 countries. Since opening, more than 13,000 animals have been born there, and thanks to Gerald Durrell and his colleagues, several species have been saved from extinction. The reason he went to Madagascar so often to, um, to collect animals to bring back was because they're endemic to Madagascar so they don't live anywhere else in the world. So you know, if they disappeared from Madagascar you can't go to another part of Africa and find some more. So that's what he was doing and he was absolutely determined to, to bring them back to keep the species safe. It sounds a paradox in a way that he's going out collecting animals from their endangered population, but he's doing that in order to have the belt and braces approach such that if the, if the actual indigenous population did disappear, he's gotten them back here safe so the species will continue. And having built up a captive population both here and in other conservation centres, I think it's true to say now, I mean, we don't go back to still take animals from the wild. No longer do we do that because we have now got a good base population in captivity so that the species will continue. Everybody who works here is vastly enthusiastic. about. It. You wouldn't work here unless you had a love of animals and cared about the thought of what might happen to them if unfortunately you know, our, our species, the wondrous human race, <laughs> wreaks more havoc and they disappear. Everybody who works here thinks that a balance in the world of, of the wild and the human, 
human beings would be the ideal situation to be. Conservation is actually quite, it's a hard game to be in. I'm sure you guys know that a lot of creatures are critically endangered and not all of humankind cares very much about that. But we do our best with the other conservation centres to educate as much as the world as possible and to try and protect these, these, these animals from extinction. From the start, the mission of Gerald Durrell has been driven forward through the hands of the many staff members who have joined him at the Conservation Centre. Without them, the great progress which was made in his career would not have been possible. His passion lives on through each and every one of them as they continue to strive and make his dream come true. So I've always been fascinated with animals. I've always been surrounded by them, um, even as a child on my grandparents' farm. Um, so I knew I wanted to do something with animals. Uh, I knew a bit about zoos and that I didn't particularly like them. I didn't like the idea of them. I'd been to a few that I found quite upsetting. Um, but I knew about Gerald Durrell Zoo and that it was progressive and it was trying to change things and also eventually get to the point where hopefully there won't be a need for zoos in the future if we can look after um, the habitats and re release the animals into the wild then the ideal is that all zoos could be shut down and by working at um, Durrell in Jersey I just felt that I was helping to move towards that goal. We want to put the animals first absolutely above everything else um, and then the keepers so that we are able to do our work efficiently and provide everything the animal needs and last of all it's the public um, not the normal way to run a business perhaps but it certainly works really well for the animals so working as a keeper in Durrell is quite different to perhaps other zoos you're given lots of opportunities um, so far I've designed three of the enclosures here two lemur enclosures and a calatricid one um, those plans were accepted and the enclosures have been built and that's a great opportunity for a keeper that you can work closely with animals see an area where you can develop and improve on and that you'll be listened to and heard and that your ideas are put forward and come to fruition. We are very keen on providing all our animals in the park with something called behavioural enrichment. Every enclosure is really carefully designed so that the animal can feel at home and we even plant the plants from the native countries where the animals come from. We try not to feed them three times a day on a nice clean plate. We will um, feed them little and often to imitate their natural environment that they would have in the wild. We've been particularly successful on many of our projects throughout the world. And the one that comes to mind first of all is that with a bird called the Mauritius kestrel, Mauritius of course being the home of the dodo, amazingly that bird was down to just four individuals left in the world. Thanks to the huge amount of work that went out on in Mauritius over the years, particularly one member of staff, Dr Carl Jones, who was awarded the MBE for his efforts, I'm incredibly proud to work for an organisation that's responsible for over 365 Mauritius kestrels flying free on that island. I think that's a very fine example of some of the impact that Durrell's work has throughout the world. In May 1972, Gerald addressed a conference on breeding endangered species in captivity at which he spoke passionately about the need for captive breeding and also voiced his wish that one day the Trust could provide a training basis for zoological students and staff from around the world. This was to materialise seven years later when the neighbouring property was bought by the Trust and turned into an international college for specialist education. The first trainee went on to become the first director of the first national park in Mauritius and 2,000 students from 125 countries have now attended the centre. 
The Academy was officially opened by the Princess Royal in 1984. Its graduates have become known as Gerald Durrell's Army. This course is a great chance for every conservationist because after this you have so many knowledge, you are forming in yourself, you exactly know what to do, what to change in your, situa in your country and in at your work. And I think when I come back in my country and in my work at Tbilisi Zoo, uh, I hope I do so many things and change situation for better. Because in my country, uh, there is no good situation for the conservation because of the government, because of the money, we have no enough money, because we are a small country just like this, but, but this course help, will help me for this, to find the funding, to understand what to do, what to, how to do better and what to change. And of course it will be good for my personal development and for my personal career. I'm just studying. It's the main thing I'm doing there. I'm studying wildlife conservation. I'm studying some useful computer programs I need to use in the conservation skill for uh, develop the conservation skills. I'm trying to understand how to save the species from extinction, how to reintroduction reintroduce species in the wild, how to connect conservation with people and the common people, how to decide the very difficult things, how to uh, talk with the people, so many things I, I'm studying there. He was a great person and there are no so many persons about like Gerald. I think that we are all the grey colour and in this grey colour Gerald Darrell was a bright point and he did so many things and so many great things, I think. When I was uh very uh, young, with my father and my mother. Uh, twice we go to the forest. We leave uh, the town or during uh, the whole day. We go to uh, the village, our village in my country. And when we arrive in the village, I was impressed with an uh, animal in the field. And after, when we go back to the town, in my point, I think that I need in my life one day to try to protect the animal because in my area, in my country, there was a lot of uh, people who kill animals for meat. There, are, there is one of person who, for me, now it's become the model the model about uh, how people could uh, protect the animal for the future generation. So her job, it was so hard, he worked so hard, but this job is benefit for every people, not in Jersey, but in the world now. So for me, Derella is the model for me now. So when I go back in my country, I'm going to talk a lot about uh, this uh, good personas for my life now. People like Gerald Durrell only come round once in a while. Gerald made it his job to take care of these animals when nobody else would. Whilst others took the lives of the animals, Gerald took their hands preventing thousands of unnecessary deaths and creating thousands of new lives. They were his family, they were his friends, and they were his reason for being on this earth. Gerald Durrell, a true hero to the animal kingdom and us. Thanks to his life's work, we will continue to live alongside these beautiful creatures for many generations to come.
we're not just touching the web, we're tearing great holes in it.